All right, pre-calc 11, here we go, video number one. So this is for section 1.1. This is our refresher on basic quadratic factoring. This is going to come in handy as we progress through PC 11 into PC 12 because factoring quadratics allow us to identify roots of graphs. Generally, uh, in our case, degree two, which means this. And what we're looking for, essentially, is if we had a graph that looked like this, the roots allow us to find those values. So let's find particular values of intersection, which are going to become important, as you'll see as we progress. That is what we're solving. And we're looking for certain numbers when we factor them. Now, because when we have uh, a polynomial in the abstract, uh, in grade 10, we worked on FOIL, right, binomial multiplication. So that is when we multiply first, so x times x, which gives us x squared, and then outside, which gives us x b, or b times x, and then inside, a times x, and then a b, which is a b. That's our last. Now you'll notice what you have here. You could factor the x out of the middle, and it gives you b plus a times x, and then a b. So you'll notice that all of your last values in a quadratic, your c value over here on the right, is a times b. And that your middle value, or your b value over here on the right, is a plus b. So when we're going from a quadratic of this form, this a squared plus bx plus c, we're essentially looking for two values that multiply together to give us that and add together to give us that. That is the goal of our basic factoring. That's what we're shooting for. That is how we solve these things. So let's look at it in the concrete, some examples. So what are we looking for? You see this big one. There's nothing in front of the x squared. That means our f from FOIL is going to give us x times x. So that's always your starting point. And you're basically half done. Because now what you're looking for is you're looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7. So if you can't see it or identify it right off the bat, then write the factors of 12. Because, well, that's a possibility, that's a possibility, that's a possibility, but also negative times a negative is positive 12, negative times a negative is positive 12, negative times a negative is positive 12. All of those pairs will give us this plus 12 solution. The question is, which of those pairs add together to give us positive 7. So obviously no, no, and then these all add together to give us negative values, so no. So the only potential solution or possible solution is that. Both positive numbers and then we just plug them in plus 3 plus 4. That is the factored form of the given quadratic. And you could check your answer using FOIL and you should get back to where you started. The beauty with this stuff is you can check every answer to make sure if it is in fact true. So let's do another. So normally we like things in descending order, which means x squared minus 6x plus 8, because remember the degree, that little number there is the degree, this has an unwritten 1, and this has a 0. So we've written it in descending order. So start there just to give your brain a break. So we'll rewrite that. And now again, we have nothing in front of our x squared, so we know it's going to be x, x. And now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to negative 6. Now there's some strategy that goes into these, which you'll see in the notes. But in this case, we're looking for, since they're adding to negatives, we kind of know that they're going to have to be negative, both, because they're multiplying to a positive. So we have negative 1, negative 8. We have negative 2, negative 4. But only one of those sets is going to add to negative 6. It's those, and we go minus 2, minus 4, and you are done. So once you kind of get the hang of this, it becomes relatively straightforward. Let's look at another. Now, here we have a scenario where, oh boy, something is staring in front of the x squared. The question is, can you factor it out? Can you factor out your a term, they call it? Can you factor it out of each spot? Because if you can't, that'll be our next video. But if you can, you do. So we're going to factor out the 5. The 5 is going to factor out, and you're going to be left with x squared plus 7x plus 12. Because if you water bomb the 5 back in, right, you get back to that scenario. 
So now we just need to factor this thing and it becomes the same scenario. What are two numbers that multiply to positive 12 and add to positive 7? Well, since that's positive there, then we know it's going to be positive numbers. So it's either that, that, or that. And if we need 7, there's our winner. So x plus 3, x plus 4. So there is your factored form. The 5 is really important. You've got to keep that written out front. Let's keep going. Now, if you have a negative in front of the x squared, it's the same thing. There's a negative 1 in front of there. So let's factor that out. And all that does is changes the sign of everything on the inside. So now you can see we have a negative c term, which means we're going to have negative 1 times 6, or 1 times negative 6, and negative 2 times 3, or 2 times negative 3, because we need a negative solution. And now we have a negative 5 here, so which of these pairs adds to give us negative 5? Well, nope, 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 there's my winning set. So we factor this out x plus 1, x minus 6. And we are good to go. Moving on. Just a little bit more complicated, but really we're just looking to see can we factor out a common factor first. Now here you'll notice you have an x term, or in this case x squared uh, addition, or a extra, in each one. So let's factor out an x squared. But then we also have a negative 3, and we can factor it out of all of those. So we'll factor out a negative 3. Because what that will do is that is going to leave us with a leading term of just x squared. Because if you were to multiply that back in, you get negative 3x to the 4. And then again, now we're going to have plus 6x and plus, watch your signs, 9. Stop there. Now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 6. And in this case, you'll notice it's the same number twice, which is one of our special cases called a perfect square trinomial, which is going to come in very handy in PC11, called PST for short, and we can write it x plus 3 all squared, because remember that implies you're multiplying the same thing together twice. So that is our solution there, and we got a few more to go. So, some helpful hints. If this number is positive, it means you either have positive factors or negative factors. So then look at this number. And if that number is positive, then the negative factors are not possible. So you only need to consider the positive scenarios, right? It just helps narrow down your work. In the same vein here, these are positive, but this is negative. So you only need to consider your negative factors. Just makes things a little bit easier. Same deal here. You can see that if this is negative, it means we're going to have to have one positive and one negative. But then look at the sign of the B term, because if it's negative, it means you need to have more negative things. So it means it would either have to be this one or this one. So again, it helps you narrow down, and then we can solve here. In this case, we would have to have more positive things, so we're going to have that scenario. So it's, uh, the better you get at it, the more strategies you can deploy to make your life go a little bit faster. Now, special factors, we already talked about this one, PST, perfect square trinomials. You can see when you get a number here where it's 4 times 4, and that's the same number there, 4 plus 4, we get a perfect square trinomial which means we can write it like that. Be really careful because this does not mean, no, no, x squared plus 4 squared. That is not true, okay? Don't ever do that. This means same thing multiplied by itself. And then similar to the last one with the extra strategy, you can see if that's negative and that's positive, well, both numbers have to be negative. So in this case, we just get x minus 4 twice, so all squared. That's what we call a perfect square trinomial. Now, do you have to be able to identify those uh, right away? No, you can still employ your regular old trick. What are two numbers that multiply to this and add to this? You'll just happen to get the same question or the same number twice. 
Last one is our special factors called difference of squares. So you'll notice there's no middle term here, and there's always going to be subtraction. That's your dead giveaway. There's no middle term, there's always subtraction. I'll throw one extra one on the page here in a second. So what you get is you get the square root of the first term, the square root of the second term, and then the signs have to be different. It is the difference of this sign that makes the middle term cancel out. Because if you foiled that, you're going to get x squared plus xy minus xy minus y squared. And it's that plus minus that cancels out the middle. So that's why these signs have to be different, and that's why this needs to be subtraction. So here's the same. You can see we have an x and a y, so we're going to have an x and a y and an x and a y, but you'll notice 16 is also a perfect square and 25 is also a perfect square, so it means we just need a little bit more room because it means 5x minus 4y and then 5x plus 4y. So as long as everything in the term is a perfect square, you're fine. And then just the most basic, just to reiterate, if you have x squared minus 36, perfect square, perfect square, difference. So it's going to be x plus, x minus, and in this case, 6, 6. Difference of squares. Those are going to come back a lot too. That's one you need to be able to identify right off the bat. But the dead giveaway is there's no middle value, right? If you look at this case, there's no bx term because the bx term is technically zero. And that's the giveaway, okay? That's why you need this plus and this minus. So that's the little refresher you needed. Uh, next video, we're gonna look at more complex polynomials, quadratics in particular, where we have an a term, so a leading term in front of our x squared that we can't factor out, and how do we deal with that? That'll be the next video. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.